Welcome to the Affiliate Marketing Dude live training where we're going to be talking about how to get traffic even if you have a brand new site. So if you can hear me okay, please let me know by typing something in the box. If you're new here and you want to learn all about affiliate marketing and marketing online in general, make sure you click the subscribe button and click the bell notification so you can always come and check us out live and also see tons of videos about how to make money with online marketing. Now what we're going to do today is we're going to show you some rapid fire quick methods to getting started and getting traffic even if you have a brand new site. Now this is something a lot of people struggle with where they have a, a site and they want to get traffic but they don't know how to do it and they kind of just wait around for the search engines to pick them up or they go for keywords that are really, really non uh, not easy to get. They're really competitive keywords uh, that are difficult to rank for. And oftentimes they get frustrated because they're like, why am I not ranking? Why am I not getting traffic? I thought this was supposed to be pretty simple. Why is it not simple? How do I make this work? And what we're going to do is we're going to break it down for you and show you a real world way to start getting that traffic and start seeing where things are. Because here's the deal. Over 4 million people every 60 seconds search Google. That means every 60 seconds of every day, an average of 4 million people are searching Google for something. Now, I read a report recently that said that 15% of the, of the keywords that are typed in are not ever looked up again, right? They're just like random words that people type in, which is crazy. So what that means is that out of the 4 million searches that happen every 60 seconds, a lot of people are, are, are looking for things and they're not competitive, which is really cool. So we're going to talk about how to find them and how to get in there and also how to rank for them, right? How do we do this? How do we start getting traffic? How do we start making money? So let's go ahead and dive right into the meat of the presentation here. Get into it. No fluff, no junk. Let's just get into it. Let's talk about the different methods we have. Now, at any time, if you want to get the notes from this video, the notes that you're seeing here on the screen, you can always go to downloadmynotes.com. At downloadmynotes.com, you can go and you can get the list of, of these notes as well as other notes and some replays and some cool stuff that we have for you. You can see that URL up in the uh banner up on top. Downloadmynotes.com is where you can get these notes. So really good. You can go on my blog and you can see all the notes there as well. So let's talk about these advanced keyword finding strategies because chances are you're out there and maybe you have a niche market, right? How many of you guys out there have a niche market, but you, you haven't really gotten started with it. You're like, you know, I know I want to be in mortgages or I know I want to be in refinance or keto diet or I know kind of the idea of what I want to do or maybe you have a website and you just don't know how to get traffic to it, right? How many of you guys are there? Type it in the box. Let me know if you do have a website and if you are struggling with this stuff and we're going to talk to you about how to start getting traffic very fast and, and maybe type in your niche or your website. Um, I think it would be really helpful if you guys actually type in your niche because what I'm going to do towards the end of this call is we're going to show you a real way to do this and I'm going to try to incorporate the niches that you guys give me right now into the content so that we can use them and some of you guys will be like, wow, that's cool. I could use it uh, for me and the rest of you guys will actually see how it works in a niche I haven't been in before. So if you have a niche, type niche and then put the niche after it, like, you know, whatever. Like Brian says niche, but he hasn't started a site and it's about hosting. We got fitness, we got credit repair. Okay, and these are very good niches because if we look at this, if we were to go to the Google Keyword Planner and do something like credit repair, like, dude, this is going to be so competitive, it's not even funny, right? We have credit repair here, and we could see that it's very, very expensive, and whenever it's expensive, it's super competitive. We can also see, like, if we go here, um, credit repair has 74,000 searches a month. That's a lot of searches. That's like, what, uh, 2,000, 2,500 a day searching for it. That's a lot of people searching, and we could see that the average advertiser is paying between 6 $7 and $23, which is crazy, right? That's like a lot of money per click, okay? So when we look at something like Credit Pair, we, we look at this and we're like, okay, well, I could go to Google and let's see what's going on here. And we look at Credit Repair and we're like, okay, well, uh, we got 8, 886 million comp uh, competing sites. I don't know why I can't talk today. 886 million competing sites. It's almost a billion websites that have the word credit repair in them. Now, if we isolate it and we put it in quotes, that means we're only going to get results that say credit repair, not like 
uh, hey, I have credit and I repaired my lawnmower last week, right? Not like that. It has to be credit repair. Uh, we could see what that looks like isolated and we could see that still 5 million results, which is competitive. Like, I don't care who you are, even if you're like the SEO king, you're not going to compete with these guys, especially when you look at what the competition's like and it's insane, right? Like we're dealing with, let's take a look, creditrepair.com, good luck beating them, uh, Facebook local, credit.com, um, some local, Credit Karma, uh, and, and these are big sites, Experian, Consumer, and Jesus. Like you're not going to compete with these guys. I don't care how many books or how many courses you get about SEO or how many softwares you buy, like you're not going to do it. Sorry, don't pass go, don't get your ranking it's not gonna work. So what we have to do is we have to go look at these niches in a different way. Now, some people might say, well, you know, like Mary has one, hers is tax debt, right? And we're like, okay, well, well let's take a look at tax debt, right? And we're gonna look at tax debt and we're gonna be like, okay, maybe this is a little bit less competitive, I don't know, but we see tax debt is actually pretty high competition here, all right? So you're gonna be competing for a measly uh, 590 searches, but let, let's take a look here. Right, we put it in quotes and we're like, okay, well, we got 1.8 million results. If we do it without quotes, we got um, 318 million sites that come up. This is super competitive. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna look at this and we're gonna be like, how do we get into these markets in a way that's going to make sense for the effort we put in? Because a lot of you guys look at this and you're like, okay, the effort I put in, like I'm going to spend months and months and months to try to get rankings and I'm probably not even going to get it. Even if I'm like an expert, right? You, you can't do it. These guys up here paying for these words and getting these words like CNBC, uh, debt.com, nerdwallet, debt.org, you're not going to compete against them. H&R Block, last I checked, H&R Block has a little bit deeper pockets than we do. So it's going to be very difficult to rank for these words. So the question is, is what do we do, right? Are we, are we just dead in the water? Can we not make this work because it's too competitive? Do we just give up? Am I not gonna go for tax debt or am I not gonna go for credit repair? What am I gonna do here, right? And we look at this and we gotta say, okay, well, first of all, we have to use advanced keyword finding strategies, okay? You gotta find keywords that people are looking up that we have to focus on that are actually going to give us what we want, right? Very, very, very important. Patrick, get us on pcmoneymaking.com if you need some help with something. They have a support, well, we have a support team there and they're always there helping out. Um, if you don't get a response from them, it's probably because you didn't check the right email or went to spam or something like that. So just check that out, okay? So we got to go there and we got to look at this and we got to be like, how are we going to get in these markets? Okay. First of all, what we want to do is we could use our trigger word method. Now, what is a trigger word? A trigger word is a word that triggers something, right? Again, if you want a list of these words, we have a small list over at downloadmynotes.com. You can get that list as well as the notes from this training as well. All right. Now you'll notice that this list of trigger words has nothing to do with any market. Right? There's nothing like balance. What do they want to balance? Do they want to balance, you know, eggs? Do they want to balance their diet? Do they want to balance, you know, a shelf they're hanging on the wall? We don't really know, right? So what we could do is we could actually take these words and we can pair them with our niche or we could use them on our own. So if we go to the Google keyword tool like this and we do something like debt, debt like this, we could do like debt balance. Maybe people want to learn how to balance debt or something like that. And we could actually see, okay, debt balance. Now we got like low competition, okay? Uh, pretty good, okay, only 70 searches, but that's okay. We got federal student loan balance, best zero balance credit cards. Okay, and we can kind of see that now the competition is starting to get a little bit less. Okay, now again, this is just using one of the trigger words. Okay, and we could see there's all kinds of stuff here with low competition, which is pretty cool. Right, so we could look at this. Here's 100 balance transfer cards. Let's see how this looks, okay? So now we have something like, you could go for credit card, okay? And we could see here, credit card here. Uh, Patrick, get us on live chat after the call and I'll get you fixed up, okay? So credit card has like 5 billion sites competing. But if we do something like 100 balance transfer credit cards, we could see here, that it's not as bad, right? 93 million, if we do it in quotes, let's take a look here. 
Okay, we do it in quotes. Yeah, Patrick, just get us over there and we'll, we'll get you fixed up. Our support's very good, but you have to go to the right place to get it. Okay, and that's PCMoneyMaking.com. All right, so now we see 100 balance transfer credit cards. There's only two results, right? That's pretty non-competitive. So are you guys starting to see how this works? Right, if you're tr starting to see how it works, type trigger word in the box. Okay. Okay. All right. Don Yad says this is all fake. It's all fake. Yes, this website's fake. Everything's fake, right? The whole internet is fake. Uh, but thank you for that, right? Um, all right. Cool. So everyone gets the trigger words, right? So we look at trigger words. We're like, okay, cool. Trigger words are here. We see how it works. Now, again, check this out because this is just one trigger word. Now, again, there's not a lot of traffic for it, okay? So there's not a ton. But there are lots of subcategory words we could start to look at and we could start to use, okay? So like here's one, federal student loan, balance transfer, uh, student loan, all kinds of different things, okay? Now, again, this is just one keyword, all right, with one trigger word. Now, if we use our trigger words with something else, we can go in and this is the work that you need to do. Um, and we go in and we could do like, okay, well, um, maybe we could do like credit card cost or something like calculator. Okay, maybe calculator, right? So we go here and we're like, okay, check this out. Let's try debt calculator, okay? And we're like, okay, boom, debt calculator, all right? And we're like, okay, cool, check it out. Again, very, very low competition. Now, debt affordability calculator, that's pretty cool. Medical school debt. Now, imagine if your site had a ranking for all of these words, right? And you're like, cool, maybe I could get like um, all these words. And I'm like, okay, now I can start getting traffic. And maybe if each of these words got me five, maybe 10 visitors a day, then boom. I could start to get some def decent traffic in the debt market. Okay, does that make sense to everyone? Hopefully it does, right? So that's one way you can do it. Um, if we did it again with um, a different niche, I think we had another niche, we had debt and we had something else. I think we had tax debt, something like that. Let's see what other niches we had here. Uh, real estate, uh, tax debt, we have ab workouts. Okay, so if we do like ab workout okay and we could pair that with one of our trigger words we could be like okay well maybe uh, ab workout guide maybe people are looking for like ab workout guide ab workout guide okay and what this is going to do is it's going to start to look at these and be like okay cool so now we could start to look at these and we have like ab roller guide ab carver workout guide ab workout guide and on and on we go we could even do like uh weight loss calculator okay and what you're going to see is that using these trigger words you are always going to find some kind of something interesting that people are searching for which will really really focus in on your niche okay so we're like okay uh, we found the balance credit cards we got like exercise we got problems right what kind of problems maybe you're in um maybe you're in like refinance problems Okay, and sometimes they'll work. Sometimes you might have to dig a little bit deeper. Okay, refinance problems has a little bit. All right, maybe we have like keto problems, keto diet problems, problems, right? And that's a good word because it's like, hey, if they're having problems with the keto diet, we know they want to lose weight and we know there's lots of other things like this. Who would have ever thought that 20 people a month search for keto anger issues, right? Like these people are like out there and they're like, wow, I'm on keto and I get angry. What the hell, right? Uh, kidney problem, keto. Might want to stay away from like direct health stuff. Uh, but a lot of these people, these are all people having problems with the keto diet. Like, boom. Do you guys see how this works? It's like, this is way less competitive when we look at all the other stuff, right? It's way less competitive. So we could do like, um, let's see, let's do this by monthly searches and see what comes up here. So we can get the ones with higher search traffic. So keto diet, health risk, problems with keto diet, 720 searches a month. So we look at this and we're like, okay, keto diet. Boom. Super competitive. All right. We got, uh, doesn't even want to show us how many sites. Let's see if it shows us on page two. Uh, 167, uh, thousand, 167 million 
uh, results for that. Now, if we do keto problems with keto diet, now we're at 17 million. If we do it in quotes, boom, now we are down to uh, 28,500, which is pretty low considering they're like listing Pinterest and all the sites on Pinterest that have that. So what you're going to see is you could use the timeout method, okay, which means you go to the last little button on Google and it's going to time out and say, in order to show you the most relevant results, everything we just showed you is very similar to itself except for 21 of them, right? So it shows you that the real competition isn't that bad and I would have never known that this existed, right? If I went to my keyword tool and I just typed in keto, keto, right? You're going to see like that would have never came up until I like go through years and years and years and years of keyword research. So what we're doing here is we're finding a way around to start to get keywords that people wouldn't even know existed, where you're going to find markets that people are like killing it in and really focusing in on what people are looking for. Because you know, if a guy has a problem with the keto, he's got some kind of issue, right? Does that make sense? Everyone getting it so far? Let me know if it makes sense. Give us a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe if you are new, right? So the trigger word method is the first and foremost uh, best way to go. You can take any of these keywords and you can put them with your keyword. So if you are in, uh, let's see, someone else was in woodworking, right? So if we take woodworking, wood working, okay? We could do woodworking and you're going to see all kinds of keywords, lots of traffic here, okay? Also very competitive, right? So we're going to take a look and it likes to be slow. And we have all kinds of traffic, very, very competitive. Now, if we take this and we isolate it with a trigger word, like maybe we go wood, wood, spell it right, wood working PDF. Now watch, right? Now we're going to see all these like woodworking PDF, woodworking plans PDF, free woodworking plans, free uh, keepsake box plan PDF, right? So this guy wants to make like a little keepsake box. And you're like, okay, keepsake box plans PDF, uh, 3 million. If we do it in quotes, we're going to see boom. Now we have uh, 9,600, 9, do the timeout method, and bada boom, bada bang, we are at 34 results. Now, you might say, well, Marcus, what are you going to do with that? You know, uh, how are you going to make money? Well, on ClickBank, there is actually a program that has all kinds of woodworking plan PDFs. So, like, I don't know, it seems pretty logical to pair that with this traffic. And you could do woodworking, right, like this. And you can find that guy's stuff and you're like, okay, cool. So like woodworker treasure chest, woodworking, woodworking, all kinds of stuff people are looking for about woodworking. And this one pays $19 a sale, 60 bucks a sale, 56. So as you guys can see, what's going to happen is you are now going to uncover tons and tons of keywords. Tons, wooden guitar stands, PDF, uh, yeah, woodworking projects, PDF, um, all kinds of stuff. I mean, there is traffic going and going and going for all kinds of this stuff. And if I can bag a couple of these keywords, right, a couple, like maybe 100 of them, maybe 50 or whatever, we could go in and I'm going to start to get traffic. And as time goes on, I'm going to get traffic for the little guys and it's gonna to start to grow and start to build and start to get me a lot more traffic and then I'll become authority in my niche. And then before you know it, you're gonna be making money while you start. You're gonna, well, disclaimer, I don't know if you'll ever make money. That's the way the thing goes, right? But we have to go in and say, well, yeah, maybe I could start getting traffic, start making some sales while I build. Okay, that's the name of the game because far too many people are trying to get traffic to a new site and they go for words like woodworking. All right, I've been doing this 20 years. I'm not gonna get the word woodworking. I'm not going to, I'm not even going to try for it, but I can try for 30 or 50 or a hundred of these and I could start to get them and I could start to get a lot of traffic, right? Like that's, that's the deal, right? I start to get a bunch of traffic. I start to make some money. I start to build and I start to grow. Okay. Does that make sense to everyone? Type in traffic if that makes sense to you. Now that's the first method. Okay. That's our advanced keyword finding strategy is to use the trigger word method. I guarantee when you use the trigger word method, you will always find some kind of thing that other people haven't thought of that's not as competitive as the other stuff, okay? The second thing we're going to go into is known as the glossary method, all right? The glossary method is by far one of my favorites, okay? Here's the deal, right? Now, I, I want to do a test here and show you guys how this works, okay? I want you to type in a word that has to do with affiliate marketing, 
Okay, type in a, a word that you know, maybe pay-per-click or opt-in list or, or squeeze page, right? Type in all the words that you know and try to be as creative as you can so that we don't duplicate, okay? And we're gonna watch these here and I wanna show you how this works because here's the deal. People in certain industries use their own language. Right? This is like church. You ever go to a church and they're like, hey man, I'm filled with the spirit or I, you know, uh, uh, I abide in the bread or whatever they say. And you're like, what are you talking about? How do you abide in bread? What does that even mean? Right? Well, they're a little group. They have their own little language. Okay? So in my world of affiliate marketing, we have a uh, click funnel, landing page, work from home, funnels, opt-in pages, squeeze pages, affiliate link, commission sales, um, link shorteners, WordPress, WordPress plugins, right? We have all these words that have to do with our market and we use them. Autoresponder, CPA, EPC, earnings per conversion. All right, so here we have all these and we're like, okay, great. These are all the words we use. Now, what happens is people forget how people search, okay? They forget how people search and they're like, well, Marcus, you know what? I want to be in the affiliate marketing niche. So I'm going to go to my trigger, my keyword tool, and I'm going to type in affiliate marketing. And I'm going to see that it's very, very expensive. I'm like, okay, affiliate marketing, expensive. If I do affiliate marketing on Google, right, we got uh, 509 million sites ranking for the word affiliate marketing, some videos. We got lots of sites, very competitive. Even if we do this in quotes, Right, affiliate marketing in quotes, way too competitive. 42 million results in quotes, right? That's competitive. You're competing against people who have been around a long time, like the old Forbes. I think he's got a little bit more power to his site, Wikipedia, uh, Investopedia, and on and on we go. It's gonna take you a long time to get this traffic. So what do you do in the meantime, right? How many of you guys like the idea? You're like, yeah, I wanna set up a site and maybe in six months or six years, I might start getting some money, right? How many of you guys like that idea? You're like, yes, I want to wait for money. I am totally patient and I like to wait. Now, if you said no, then you're like me. I am super impatient. I want to see stuff happen right now. Now, what you do is instead of going for the word affiliate marketing, you would go through and you type something in like affiliate marketing glossary. Okay, now again, remember, the people at church that are like, are you abiding in the bread or filled with the spirit or how you're reading your word or whatever, right? They have their own language. They only talk that way because they're part of a group. Affiliate marketers, we have our language. We have banner ad, pay-per-click, affiliate offer, link tracker. We have our own language, okay? Now, what you're going to notice is that if you type something in like affiliate marketing glossary, what's going to happen is you're going to get all these terms, Right, and you're gonna go to all these terms, like on my site, we have a direct response glossary. Now, all these terms are all about making money, affiliate marketing, stuff like that. Now, in a roundabout way, these people want affiliate marketing information, right? They, they wouldn't care about it if they weren't looking it up, right? So you could type something in like affiliate link, okay? So instead of affiliate marketing, maybe I could do something like affiliate link and maybe I could find people that are looking for like Amazon affiliate links or maybe Kaiser affiliate link or Amazon referral link or, or how to cloak an affiliate link, right? All this traffic here is looking for information on affiliate marketing. They just don't know it yet, right? So like affiliate links for bloggers. Okay, not a whole lot of traffic on that one, but let, let's take a look at it anyway. Affiliate, mark, affiliate links for bloggers, 28 million. Do it in quotes, boom. All right, 18,000, not too crazy, right? This is probably something we can do. Timeout method is showing that there's 31 results. Not too bad, right? Now, instead of going for affiliate marketing, which, you know, it had some good traffic on it, right? Affiliate marketing, okay? Instead of doing all the work to try to get this ranking and get 40,000 searches, all right? Like if you were number one on that ranking, you'd probably get like a 10th of that or something, or maybe maybe a little bit more, probably 30, 50%. Okay, so let's say you got 10,000 views, uh, visitors a month. Now that is harder than getting a bunch of the other words that are more targeted, that are more focused on people that are looking for this stuff, 
and getting these words. Like I could get lots of these words very, very easily. Okay. So affiliate links for bloggers. Um, you could do just affiliate links again. Um, and you can see what's going on, right? Is this all making sense to everyone? All right. Type makes sense if it's making sense to you. All right, cool. So we look at this and we're like, okay, affiliate links, and we search for this. And we could see like even Amazon affiliate link, right? I could look at this. So instead of affiliate marketing, if I do Amazon affiliate link, okay, 4 million competing. I don't know if our timeout will do it on this one. Let's see if it does. It's hard to see behind the camera here, but we'll try. Right, and then we could just keep going until it times out somewhere around here. And you just keep going. Well, let's put it off screen real quick so I can get over there. Um, and what you're going to see is that eventually it will time out. So it's saying 168 results, um, which isn't that terrible. I mean, it's a little bit more competitive, but hey, check it out. If I could bag a ranking that gets, you know, 6,000 searches a month plus subcategory words, boom, I'm doing pretty well. Uh, we can also look up like Hoplink or Shopify affiliate links, or all these other things. And if you get all this stuff, you're going to get traffic, and it's not going to be that hard to do, okay? So, glossary method is absolutely key. And again, remember, that's just one word, right? We just went for one. There's tons of others, like advertorial, right? People looking for advertorials or something like that. Maybe they're doing uh, copywriting and whatnot, and you can write a little thing about advertorials or make a video about it. Um, and you can bag some of the traffic. You got 3,600 people a month searching for advertorial. You can go in and say, okay, well, maybe people are looking up uh, front end profits or let's do, um, let's see what else we got. Copywriting, headline, break even, uh, control, conversion, email list, um, information marketing, right? Maybe we could do information marketing instead of affiliate marketing or something like that. And what you could do is you could start to put all of these in there. Now, the same thing is going to happen and you guys are going to love this because this is going to make it really, really pop for you, right? So the same thing happens here, right? All kinds of information. Um, the same thing happens when you do stuff like tax debt. So we had that lady who was doing tax debt. I think it was Mary and we could do tax debt glossary right? And we can see what kind of terms come up for tax debt glossary. And you can even go in and find out like what forms are used, right? So I did this research and I found out that there was a tax form. I think it was a OIC form, uh, offer and compromise form for tax stuff. So like uh, form 656B or form 433A, right? So instead of going like tax debt, which is super competitive. If we do 433A, watch what happens, guys. This is like totally where you get the big stuff. So now you got all these people, right? So you got 880 people a month with low competition and they're looking up this form and they're looking up the form because they can't pay their taxes, right? Does everyone see a correlation there? Like, look at the difference. Like here we got these people looking up the form, cheap traffic, easy to rank, Good stuff, right? Not super easy, but it's a little bit easier than tax debt. Then you look at it and you're like, okay, well, tax, tax lawyer. Okay, tax lawyer is like super expensive, right? So we just took that traffic in and we're getting it super cheap or even free and we're flipping it to a market that's like $60 a click. Okay, is everyone getting an aha moment here? Type in aha if you got an aha moment because this keyword research is the key to making this work. All right, and Jerry says, how do you get in front of those 880 people? That is going to be part two of the call, which is the traffic plan strategy. Okay, so like same kind of deal, guys. You just go and you figure out what these people are searching for. Now, going regular, like, okay, tax attorney is going to be very competitive. It's going to be very difficult. But when you go for the forums and things like that, like maybe you do form 433, maybe, maybe we just type in 433 or something like that. And we're like, okay, form... 433, um, that one, 433, uh, tax form, uh, or maybe you could do the other one, 656, I think it was, form. And it shows like how to do it, right? There's 1,300 people looking up that, offering compromise, right? All these people have the same problem. They're looking for a tax lawyer, they just don't know it yet, 
right? Is everyone putting those two things together? Okay, hopefully you are. And when you use the glossary method, you'll always find stuff. Like I pulled up um, a glossary for um, refinancing, right? So you're like, okay, well, Marcus, you know what? The word refinancing is super competitive. So refinance, you know, we're going to see this is competitive. A lot of people competing. Refinance mortgage rates, all right? Super high competition, just insane. Now, if we use our glossary method, we could take these words because there's certain words people look up when they're in certain situations. Like, how many of you guys woke up today and you typed in appraisal fee? I didn't. Did anyone here type in appraisal fee? Probably not because you're not looking for a mortgage, right? So we could do like appraisal fee. You could do application fee, uh, APR, closing cost, right? So you could do like closing cost. Okay, so cool. So closing cost. All right, so these people are either looking to buy a house or sell a house. So they're looking up their closing cost. And boom, look at low competition all the way down. Lots and lots of low competition. Closing cost calculator FHA, right? So if we do refinance, boom, competition, 167 million results. If we do closing cost calculator FHA, 560,000, right? Would you rather compete with the other one or would you rather compete with this one, right? We got closing cost calculator FHA. I know what kind of loan the dude wants, right? That's like pretty solid. And all I got to do is make a guide, help him out. Maybe say, hey, you know what? You should get more than one quote. Click here to get a quote. Um, and we could see that on this one with the timeout method, there's only 40 results, which is pretty darn cool, right? So we got to look at that. We're like, hey, check this out. Again, that's only one word. Right? We could even do good faith estimate. People are sitting there and they get the good faith estimate from their lender. These people, and now a lot of people are going to tell you. I was watching a video the other night um, and this guy was like, oh, there's these words that you shouldn't do because these people are not buying things. And he used examples like good faith estimate. And I'm like, all right, well, they might not be buying a good faith estimate online, but the dude's probably going to spend a couple hundred K on a house. So... I think maybe I'm wrong, but I think there's money attached to this keyword, right? How many of you guys are like, yeah, dude, there's money attached to it. I mean, come on, right? Good faith estimate, uh, good faith estimate of closing costs. Uh, there you go. Like, look at that. Good faith estimate of closing costs. Uh, 10 million without quotes, with quotes, we are looking at uh, 23,000. Definitely going to time out on that one as well, right? So these are very, very non-competitive, very easy to go through, all right? So first we covered our trigger word method. If you're good on that, type trigger in the box. Next, we top tackled our glossary word method. Now, if you need any more training on these methods specifically, I would urge you to get the Simple Sites course at simplesitesbonus.com or take a look at the traffic class that we're going to have at the end of this call. We're going to talk about that as well. All right, so trigger word method, glossary method. Um, we got those. You guys get kind of the idea of how to do it. If you get the glossary one type glossary. Now, the next one is a chapter method. Now, a chapter method is where you could go through and you could be like, okay, well, maybe I want to go through and look at like a book and look at the chapters. Or maybe I could go through and I could do um, something like psychology course outline. Okay. And you could look up like a psychology course outline and you could see the outline of it or maybe a book. You could look at the chapters and you take those chapters of the book or whatever it is and you put them into your keyword tool and you're like, okay, cool. So I could put those in there. Uh, it's much like the glossary method, only you're going chapter wise. Okay. Does that make sense to everyone? All right, Timothy, that's a good niche. Uh, if I have time towards the end, I'll use that one as well. Okay, so that is the um, chapter method, right? You just go to like Amazon, look at the top books in your niche, see what the chapters are about, and they'll kind of tell you stuff. Because again, people are going to use their own language and they're going to use their own stuff, okay? Next is what I call the competition spy. Now, this one is a little bit more advanced and it's a little bit more difficult to do, but I'll kind of show you the overview of how to do it. All right, what you're going to notice is that in your niche, there are various people that have various rankings. So, for example, if I was to go and say, well, I want to be in the affiliate niche, okay, you could type, you can go into alexa.com, 
And you could scroll down to where it says browse top sites and you could put in the website that is your competitor, okay? So you put your competitor's website in here or someone who's ranking for your words if you don't yet have a site. Click on find. What it's gonna do is it's gonna give you an overview of the words. It'll also give you some other competitors that are at the top, some sites that are related, okay? It's gonna give you some more sites that are related here. It's gonna tell you the ranking. So like the zero is the best or one is the best. Um, the higher the number, the worst. So 56,000, not too bad, right? It's gonna show you some of the keywords they're using, right? It's gonna show you some of the keywords that would be easy for them to rank for. All right, it's gonna show you some optimization opportunities, some buyer keywords, and then it's gonna give you a breakdown of other stuff that's going on. Now, what you can use this for, okay? Alexa's good, uh, there's some other tools that we use. What you could use this for is you could actually take and put a site in. So before I did this call, or before we set up for this call, I did this on a site that was in um, mortgages and Federal Reserve and different things like that, right? So this is like a site about mortgages and Federal Reserve stuff, okay? So what I did is I ran them through the competition thing, okay? Um, someone asks, is Alexa free? Alexa, this part is free, but if you want more info, they do have a paid version, okay? But you could get some good info free. Now, through one of the programs that I use, um, this one actually spits out like the keywords, so it'll tell me the position of the word, the amount of traffic they think they're getting from the word, and the ranking. Right now, what you could do is you could actually go through and take a look at some of the keywords and, and start to rank for these, right? So like Convenity uh, Reinvestment Act, you can go look at these and you can be like, wow, you know, I never thought about a word like uh, Federal Reserve Bank or uh, internship or maybe balance sheet or mortgages. Let's see if there's any for mortgage. Okay, so Emergency Farm Mortgage Act. Right, I never would have thought of that word, but this dude is getting it and he's got uh, 100 searches a month going on for this. And that's something I probably never would have thought of. Emergency Farm Mortgage Act, right? Not very competitive. So we could go through and we could use some of these words. Um, I've done this on several different niches. A couple of them I did uh, before the call. I took some screenshots of them. Uh, this guy was in a uh, pool site. Right, he had a pool site, and I was like, I wonder what this guy ranks for. And you could see what kind of traffic, and we found out lawn mower blade sharpener. I never would have even thought about that, but I mean, we go there and we're like, okay, well, let's check it out. Right, like that's a thing apparently. Lawn mower blade sharpener. Right, and it's getting traffic, so it gets about eighteen thousand searches a month. Competition's actually pretty low considering how much they're spending on it. And then if we go to Google and we look it up, we're like, hey, check this out. Lawnmower blade sharpener, only 2.3 million. Do it in quotes. And bada bing, bada bang. Let's do it in quotes like this. Oh, it looks like it even has subcategory words, right? So lawnmower blade sharpener, 209,000. Not too competitive there. It's got lots and lots of subcategory words. Guys, this would be something that you could actually get in on and make it work, right? Does that make sense to everyone? All right, and he's in a niche with a bunch of stuff, high pressure shower head, and this is something where if you were an affiliate, you can go out there and start ranking for this, write little reviews, write little sites, and boom, you would start to get traffic just like this guy does. Now, it might take a little bit of time to get it started, uh, but going for the lower hanging fruit, the stuff that's easy, like this guy did all the work for you, it's like, there you go, like, you know, best handheld shower head, um, and stuff like that, and you could see uh, how much traffic they're getting, what his ranks are, um, and what you could do. And if you had a site solely focused on one of these things, like this guy's site has nothing to do with lawnmowers. It was actually a pool site. Um, but we found out, hey, this guy's got this thing. So I could actually go out there. I could make a site all about lawnmower blade sharpeners and I could start selling them and I could be an affiliate and boom, there we go, right? I can even get them if I'm smarter. I could go in and send them to like Terminex. Like, hey man, if you want to mow your lawn, you probably shouldn't have bugs in your lawn because they kill your lawn. Go get a Terminex or whatever um, or lawnmowers or whatever it is. And all this traffic here, Guys, tons of traffic. Best grinding wheel for... Sh I mean, look at this. That's a long tail word if there ever was one. Best grinding wheel for sharpening lawnmower blades. Right? Here we go. Best grinding wheel for sharpening lawnmower blades. 
208 results in quotes. Crazy, right? Really, really cool. Okay, Jules says, how long would you say it takes for an article to rank to like 80% of its maximum potential on a fairly new website, like three months? No, actually, if you do this right, um, sometimes you can get them ranked in like a week or a day. Uh, my record, I think, was 53 seconds. Uh, we had a site rank. Um, now, that site did have some juice to it, which will show you how to get juice to a site uh, so that they can get picked up. But here's the key. The key is the less competitive the word is, the faster and the easier you're going to rank. Right? So, like, if I, if I go for something like this, it's going to be a lot faster than going for, like, best grinding wheel or lawnmower sharpener or something like that okay so very very simple you just got to go in there and you got to focus on it all right so the competition spy is really good another couple competitions we did here um i did one on this site this was a popular site uh from someone on youtube that does uh seo training and we i was like okay i wonder what he's ranking for and you can see all the stuff they're ranking for and where the majority of traffic's coming in and you can go in and be like okay well maybe I can find something very specific, like, okay, all these are just regular. Now, again, maybe I can get Terminex if these people are looking for, like, how to get rid of snakes. But I would go for a word like this one here. Let's see if I can highlight it here. I would go for a word like, um, what do parakeets eat? Because that probably that dude probably has, like, a pet parakeet. Or something like uh, miniature poodle. Maybe this guy wants to buy a miniature poodle. Um, maybe we could go for, uh, rattlesnakes or something like that. How long do parakeets live? It's probably a guy with a pet as well. And we can strip out the ones that we want because I might not want, uh, a garden snake. I might not want to rank for that. All right. So we got to look at that. Okay. Does that make sense to everyone? Um, another example we had, uh, was for food, right? This guy had a blog or girl had a blog about, um, bread recipes and you could see tons of stuff there. Now, again, you're going to have lots and lots of subcategory words. And when you put these with your um, trigger words, so like if you do uh, yeast or you could do sour dough bread won't. Okay, one of your trigger words would be won't. And you could do like sourdough bread won't or like uh, you could just do sour dough starter. Okay, and you might have people that are looking for like bread won't rise, bread won't ferment or whatever um and you can see all this sourdough bread recipe with starter um gluten-free sourdough bread recipe uh, sourdough bread machine recipe and on and on we go um and lots and lots of traffic so we could look at that and we could focus and we could be like okay um you know what do we got here what what kind of rankings can we get um and what can we do with them and let's see uh so next up we have um, cinnamon rolls. Oh, let's see. I don't know why I clicked that, but there we go. Hopefully it opens on the other screen. Okay, there we go. Uh, we got like sourdough pretzels, sourdough cinnamon rolls, and on and on we go. Another one um, was for recipes, and I found like pheasant recipes. Dude's getting a lot of traffic. Like his top number one keyword is for pheasant recipes or like how to freeze corn on the cob, right? So you could go out there and most people are going to be like, well, Marcus, I want to rank for recipes. You know, I think that'd be really good to rank for recipes. And it's like 4 billion sites that have recipes. But if I do like how to freeze corn on the cob, right? Now we got 1 million. Let's do it in quotes here. And we're like, okay, how to freeze corn on the cob. Now we're looking at like 30,000. We could do our timeout method here. Let's see if we can get to the end. Somewhere over there. Keep going. I have to move this over. Stupid. Oh, there it is. Uh, 87 results, right? And we can see YouTube and stuff like that uh, is ranking as well. Right? Is, that, is this making sense to everyone? On a scale of 1 to 100, 100 being you totally know what's going on, 1 being Mark is what the hell are you talking about? Let me know where we're at. All right. All right, got some 100s. That's what we like to see. Awesome. A couple of 90s. All right, we'll, we'll deal. Okay, so that's basically what we're looking at there. Uh, when you spy on your competition, you can do extremely well, um, and you can see exactly what they are ranking for, uh, which is really, really cool. Um, and you can see exactly what it is they're after, right? And then you're just, okay, just go down the list. Uh, here's one that I did for mine. I noticed that uh, for one of mine, um, 
Visa Print discount codes. Like, okay, I rank for that. That's pretty cool. Visa Print has an affiliate program. I'm getting uh, traffic from this one, and boom, there you go. Uh, you could also see that uh, we rank for Super Affiliate, um, Fiverr Affiliate, right? Now, when I have these, like this one, I didn't know I was going to get Fiverr Affiliate. I didn't even expect it, but I'm number 36. Now that I'm number 36, it's a lot easier to go from a 36 to a 1 than it is to go from nothing to a ranking, right? So now I can go in and I could just boost that up, do some work, and boom, there we go. Another one, ClickBank Affiliate. A lot easier to start ranking for that. Shopify Affiliate, um, OfferVault, uh, different words like this that I rank for, and I could take a look. And if you were my competitor, you could go in and be like, ah, that's what he's ranking for. Pretty cool. I could strip some good words that I want out of that. All right, so the advanced trigger word or the advanced keyword finding strategies we went over are the trigger word method, the glossary method, the chapter method, and the competition spy. Now, before we go any further, are there any questions about those four? Or either of them? Okay, any questions on that? And if you found this helpful, let us know. Type helpful in the box. Give us a thumbs up and a like. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and click the bell so that you can learn all kinds of cool stuff like this every single week. All right. Give you guys a couple seconds for questions there. All right, doesn't look like any questions on there. Um, so we're going to go ahead and dive into the traffic plan. So the first part of the deal is to start an Excel file or a notepad and list out all the keywords that you want to get that you think you can get. Okay, so you want no competition words or low competition words that you think you could get. So I would go in there and I'd be like, okay, uh, you know, maybe out of those ones I had, maybe I want, uh, you know, how to do the corn on the cob or how to do whatever. And I would try to pick out the ones that I want because if I know the ones that I want, I can go through and make it work. Now, this list should be 30 to 100 words long. Okay, 30 to 100 words long. So you're going to have 30 to 100 words that look pretty good that you think you can get. Okay, now I don't want to see words like credit repair. I don't want to see words like tax debt. I don't want to see words like lose weight. All right, you're not going to get them. It's not going to happen. It's going to be very difficult. Okay, maybe later you could get them, but right now you can't. So what we want to do is we want to take that list and we want to start to research the main word and the sub words. So I think there was one that I had recently. Yeah, so like sourdough or, or maybe we have something like a, a form or a tax debt or whatever, right? So we take those words and we start to do um, the research on them and, and start to find out what's going on, right? So if I go out there and I'm like, okay, well, maybe I had one like um, credit or let's do, let's see, what was it? I know I had one earlier that was in credit. Does anyone remember it? There was a credit one I had. I think it was like credit uh, something, or maybe it was good faith estimate or something, right? So let's, or let's do loan origination fees. Like that dude's, that guy's getting a loan, right? I think if he types in loan origination fees, the guy probably is getting a loan, okay? So we take a look at this and we're like, here's our list of words. We got some good words we can use, okay? So first and foremost, what we want to do is take some of these words that we would like to get. So we could do like mortgage origination fee, all right? We go to Google. We type it in Google. And we're like, okay, mortgage origination fee. Now notice there's no paid ads. Yay, I like that. Next, we want to take a look at the competition. See if there's anything we can get in on, right? Is there like a forum? Is there uh, Pinterest? Is there um, a, a site that we could post on? Maybe a blog, right? And we want to start to see if there's anything we can get involved in that's going to help us, okay? Now, a lot of these you can. Um, you can get involved and you can put a post on their site. You could do comments or maybe we could do like mortgage um, forum, right? And we could see what's out there, okay? So lots of mortgage forums and things like that. Okay, so we're going to take our word and we're going to research the main word and keyword. So we're going to research the main one. We're going to research uh, personal loans with no origination fee. Maybe we'll take a look at this one and we're like, okay, what's going on in Google for it? Personal loans with no origination fee. Okay, magnify money, nerd wallet. Um, again, we're looking for like forums. We're looking for places that we uh, can post our stuff. Okay. Also, we could be looking for YouTube and things like that. Uh, for example, like if you did uh, sourdough, sourdough starter. 
okay? On sourdough starter, you're gonna see um, there's like recipe sites that you can comment on. There's also videos, right? So we could do YouTube. Um, there's also going to be like a lot of these are blogs that you can post a comment on saying, oh, that's pretty good, but mine does this and link back to your site. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a list of those things and the subwords. Okay. Then number two, we're going to select the LBE traffic method. What is the LBE traffic method? Well, this is very important. You want the lowest barrier of entry traffic method. Okay. Now this exists for every niche out there, every keyword out there. There's always a lowest barrier of entry and you wanna take a look at that and say, okay, if I'm doing uh, personal loans with no origination fee, what's the lowest barrier of entry traffic? Or if I'm doing sourdough, what's the lowest barrier of entry? Well, the lowest barrier of entry on this is probably gonna be a YouTube video, right? So boom, there we go. We put up a video, we focus, and we try to go for the keywords that we want, okay? Um, if we're going for a loan thing, like maybe we're going to do form 433A uh, for the tax one. So maybe we do like form 433A instructions. Okay. This one's going to be a little bit different. We got YouTube, lowest barrier of entry. We also have like this here. Uh, this guy, I know he has some, some places you could actually post comments and things like that. Um, another low barrier of entry would be paid traffic because there is no paid traffic here. Um, another barrier of entry would be actually having the PDF on your site if you're allowed to do that. Um, but YouTube's going to be a very, very good way to do that as well. So what you want to do is select the low barrier of entry, lowest barrier of entry traffic method. Okay. You want the low barrier of entry because you don't want to wait a while and you don't want to get in with all the competition. Like I want the ranking. I want it now. I want to start getting traffic. I would rather get traffic now for a keyword that gets 30 visitors a day than wait seven months to get traffic for a word that gets a thousand a day. Why? Because in the months that you are waiting, I'm going to be dominating. I'm going to get a bit, be getting a bunch of traffic, right? So very, very, very simple. All right. Next, what you want to do, once you find your low barrier of entry, so you're going to go in, you're like, okay, what's the low barrier of entry? Well, I see PDFs here. I see YouTube's here. Okay. So like if I wanted this ranking, if I want to rank for 433A instructions, okay, I would look at this and I'd be like, okay, 433A instructions, um, we got some traffic here, very good traffic, even though it's little traffic, this isn't a market where people are like, these people are in debt and the lawyers cost a lot and you know, this shit costs a lot of money, right? Same with the credit card one we talked about, the stuff costs a lot of money. So what I would do if I wanted this is I'd be like, okay, well, the lowest barrier of entry in my opinion on this word is going to be YouTube. I would make or outsource a YouTube video, go for that. I put the YouTube video on my site and I'd, I'd link to my site and I try to get rankings from my site and from my YouTube video. Okay. So they'll both link back to each other. All right. So very, very simple. And when you do this and you do it on enough words, you're going to start to get traffic. Okay. So step one, research your main keywords and subwords. Again, remember 30 to hundred different words. Um, when you go for them, get them ones that you know you can get. Okay. And we're going to talk more about this later. Number two, get your low barrier of entry traffic method. Go where the traffic is at. Right. If I do something like, uh, let's say we get one of these words from a competitor or whatever, and we're like, OK, I want to get um, Vistaprint discount code. All right. So I'm like, OK, Google Vistaprint discount code. OK, now I can go in here and I can be like, OK, there's Vistaprint, there's coupons, 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 coupon cabin, CNN, givingassistant.org. That might be like a forum type thing. Um, I could do paid traffic. I don't see any videos, so I could probably do a video about it, right? Where to find coupon codes or whatever. Um, and I could do this pretty easily. So again, you're going to find the lowest barrier of entry. Let's try another one here. Okay, another one would be a ClickBank affiliate. Okay, so ClickBank affiliate. ClickBank affiliate. Okay, we go in here and we're like, okay, what's the lowest barrier of entry? Well, we got YouTube there definitely a low barrier of entry. Um, we got these, which are forums we can get in on, Small Biz Trends, Authority Hacker, Affiliate Networks List. Okay, let's see what else we have. Uh, more YouTube. Okay, so YouTube is definitely going to be a good one on this. Um, now, I am ranking, I think I'm ranking like number 30 or something um, for mine, and it's just a blog post, so blog posts are definitely 
uh, something you can go for that are pretty, pretty good. Here's Quora. All right, Quora is a great low barrier of entry, right? I can get listed on that and then instantly I am on a site that is ranking. Instantly. Like, I don't have to wait. Like, there I am. I will get passed through traffic from them. Might not be much, but it's something. And that's the thing you got to do is you got to start where you can and get out there and make it work, right? So very, very cool. And we could see a lot of different things that we can get involved in, right? Is this making sense to everyone? Give me a hundred if it's making sense. Um, so we want to find the low barrier entry. Let's try another one just so you guys get it. Um, let's say we had, um, let's see, Offer Vault. Okay, we could do like Offer Vault or something like that. If I wanted to rank for Offer Vault or whatnot. Okay, we got Offer Vault, we got YouTubes, we got um, different forums, we got a Facebook uh, page, we could start talking there. Uh, there's my page, which is a simple uh, blog post uh, that gets traffic all the time, right? Um, another one I did, I, I found out a lot of people were looking for uh, Wix affiliate marketing. Okay, people wanted to know if you could do affiliate marketing with a Wix site. Um, and I went through and I made a little article. Here's Quora here. If I put my article on Quora, I'd probably start ranking faster right away. Uh, right now we're number 10 here. Um, and this gets traffic every day, right? So I'm literally getting traffic every day from a stupid little term that I would have never thought of before had I not done this. Now, if I do this with enough terms, I get a bunch of traffic and my rankings start to go up and I start to grow and I start to build. Is this making sense to everyone why we need to focus on the keywords we know we can get? Right? This is why people sit there and they're like, my site's not ranking, I'm not getting any traffic. It's because you're not going for the right trigger words. You're not going for the right method. Your strategy is off and you need to focus. So the traffic plan strategy is number one, research your main and sub keywords, 30 to 100 words. Next, select a low barrier of entry traffic method for each of those words, okay? Whatever it is, like Offer Vault, maybe do a blog post. Um, Wix affiliate, maybe a blog post. Uh, maybe like the one I was, um, I'm going for now is free affiliate course or free affiliate marketing course. Uh, this is one I'm going for now. Um, and we could see YouTube's good. We could see um, there are Quora. Okay, that's good. Um, we can also see that there's like PDFs and stuff. Uh, Udemy courses. So like if I created a Udemy course, and I just put the free thing I was going to give them anyway in the Udemy, um, and boom, there I am. I, I, I rank for that, right? Uh, very simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to start to look for the low barrier of entry for each one, right? And you could see here, I just went for this word a couple of weeks ago. Um, actually, on November 7th, I put this up, and here we are 13 days later. I'm already, I don't know, number 30-something if you count correctly, right? And that's pretty darn good for free affiliate marketing course. And that's traffic I'd want to go for, right? Does that make sense to everyone to see that in a real world way? Johnny says, how fast can you get your content to rank in Google? It depends on your site. Like if you do an example, watch this, cnn.com. If I do tools and I do any time and I do the past hour, CNN listed this 15 minutes ago, 59 minutes ago, 44, 59, 13 minutes ago, um, minutes ago. My record was 53 seconds. I actually have a screenshot where it said this. Here's one that ranked uh, four minutes ago, right? So like Democratic candidates debate. So Democratic candidates debate, right? We could see that this thing ranked in Google. CNN's probably up here somewhere. There it is, four minutes ago. Boom, there you go, right? So you can actually see that this stuff works, right? There he is ranking, Democratic's debate, 32 minutes ago, four minutes ago. Um, so when people say, oh, you know, you gotta wait six months to rank, that's not exactly true. This guy ranked three minutes ago. All right, now, granted, these are like news sites and you don't own a news site, I get that. But if you own a site in your niche, you could start to rank for keywords that aren't that competitive, right? Very, very, very simple. And if there's not that much competition, you can do this, right? And we actually, I have a webinar uh, that I did years ago where we actually ranked a site live. I was like, look, here it is. I'm putting the post up and here we are. And now we have the ranking and it was 53 seconds, which is why I know that number, the record is 53 seconds for me, right? So you, you select your low barrier of entry and the low barrier of entry is key. So the keyword and the barrier of entry, those are key, okay? Then what you're gonna do 
is you're going to create content around your keyword, right? So you make some content, whatever it is, a blog post, uh, a YouTube video, a PDF, um, whatever it is, right? You make your content around that. Now, what you want to do here is you want to format your content for SEO purposes. This is not as hard as people make it out to be. When I sat down and I made my blog post for free affiliate marketing course, free affiliate marketing course, okay, I didn't do SEO. Like I haven't studied SEO in a long time because not a lot of stuff changed. However, in uh, 13 days, we were able to rank here. We actually ranked for it, I think, three days later. But at any rate, we'll call it 13 since I didn't do a webinar last week. Um, but here we have this free affiliate marketing course. I didn't do fancy SEO. I put the affiliate marketing course up here. And then what I did is I made a little outline of the notes. And then I just pasted the transcript of the video. Right? That's it. Just the notes there. It's the same notes that we're giving you. Same kind of deal. And it starts to rank just because I'm like, okay, if the article is focused on the keyword, you're going to rank Like if you, if you focus it. Now, again, this only works because we're finding the right keywords. Okay, very, very important. Okay. Um, Vinny says, do we put our photo or Photoshop it or another photo? Well, it depends on what you're doing. If you're doing like Pinterest, then yeah, you would do photos and you should make your own so you don't get other junk. Now, by subcategory words, I'll tell you a little trick we did years ago. Uh, years ago, when I ran mortgage sites, we would find a keyword for mortgages, and then we would put all 50 states on the site somewhere so that it would ping it, because the subwords will get picked up. So what you're going to see here is like free affiliate marketing course, okay? You're going to ping other words, okay? So like if I do free affiliate marketing course shop, okay, I'm probably going to rank better for this word because we have the word there um there are let's see do, 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 do probably page two or something um what you're going to see is that we are going to ping for that word as well because of the fact that the word shop is there and we have a free affiliate marketing course and the word shop okay so very very cool and you're going to notice that lots of other keywords will ping as well like if i do a direct response marketing glossary Okay, and then I include one of the terms that I have here, like maybe pre-sell affiliate offers. Uh, what you're going to notice is that it's going to pick it up as well because the way it works is it's looking for the stuff and it's like direct response grocery and then it says pre-sell affiliate offers or whatever. Okay, or you could do like your job is to or whatever and it's going to ping all the different words. Does that make sense to everyone? How it pings all the words? Okay, Tony, Marcus, could you please use one of your low entrance keywords to penetrate the explainer video service niche? If we have time in the end, yes, I will. Uh, ping, what I mean ping is it'll it'll find it, right? So it's going to go through your site and it's going to look at all the words and it's going to find different things at once. And since people search for all kinds of different things, you want as many uh, relevant words as makes sense, right? I don't want my content to be, you know, Direct response glossary. This direct response glossary is all about response and glossaries, and it's very direct and to the point. So if you're looking for a direct response glossary, this is the best direct. You don't want to do that. Just make it make sense and include as many other words as you can. Okay? So, like, if I put the word definitions in here, I would ping for affiliate definition, affiliate link definition, and I might rank for some of them. Okay? Same thing we did with the, um, with the uh, states on the site. Okay? So, very, very cool. All right, so now we're going to go in. After we find these, we create content around our keyword, and we try to include as many sub-keywords as we can. Okay, again, follow these in order. Number four, we format our content for SEO purposes. Have a the uh, keyword in the title, in the headline, in some images, with image tags, and within the body. Also, if you can use links, that would be good as well. Now, number five, once you have your content up, you can do and use what's called an accelerator method. Now, an accelerated method or accelerator method is something that I use to get sites indexed faster. Now, unless your content is on another site like YouTube or Quora or whatever, um, you can use an accelerated method by going out and getting backlinks. Um, you can, you know, share your article 
on different sites. You could put your answer on Quora and link back to your site. You can make a YouTube video and link back to your site. You can make an article post and link back to your site. Now the key here, this is the key, is that your accelerator method, if you're using other sites, you want that other site to rank better than you. Okay, you totally want it to, right? Because if I can get on Quora, Google's gonna rank Quora higher and faster than it's going to rank my brand new website even my old website, right? So if I can get that to rank, it's gonna give me pass-through traffic, and over time, Google's gonna be like, well, Quora links to that guy, and we like Quora, so I think that's gonna work, right? Or you could even, you know, buy links. You could get backlinks. And again, be careful with this. You don't wanna go buy links from like Johnny the Link Spammer. You wanna get quality links, which is usually good to do them yourself. Now, an accelerated method uh, works really, really well. I learned about the accelerator method years ago when I actually did an ad on the ClickBank login page. So on the ClickBank login page, they have advertisements. And back in the day, they had little advertisement links here. And I worked up the courage to spend $1,000 a month on a link. And I bought the link and I got some sales. And I wasn't that happy with my sales. I was like, whatever. But I noticed that the brand new site that I linked to off of ClickBank got indexed. And I also noticed that every site that the new site linked to that was also a new site got indexed as well and got ranked really fast, which is really, really, really cool, right? Really simple to do. Um, and I learned the power of backlinks. And it's basically the way backlinks work. Um, if you ever went to school and you wrote a, a research paper or a term paper or whatever, um, when you do your research paper, you have to have at the bottom, what do we have at the bottom, right? At the bottom of every good research paper, what do you have? Does everyone know what you have? Come on, you, you got to know this. I didn't go to college. A lot of you guys probably did, but you probably know it better than I do. When you write your research paper, you have something, and this is the essence of how Google works. All right, Tony and Prestige got it. You have references. All right, so here's what happens, right? What happens here, and let me see if I can open this program to show you what it looks like. Okay. And this program takes forever, so just give me a minute. Actually, apparently a couple minutes. Program's taking its sweet-ass time. Come on, program, load. All right, so you have your, um, what do you call them? Your references, okay? So what happens is this. You write your paper. Okay, here's your term paper. It's a beautiful paper. My beautiful term paper. And this is how you know that the people who started Google started it in college. So they have their beautiful term paper, and then at the bottom, they would have their references. And it'd be like, okay, I reference, um, you know, Ted Jones. I reference, you know, uh, I don't know, Art Johnson and Jackass McGee, okay? And you have all these different things here. Now, what happens is Google took that idea and they're like, well, you know, all these people writing all these term papers, AKA blog posts or websites. So you got all these people writing all these term papers. Here's all these term papers, right? They're all writing it. Now, they're gonna find out that like, one guy's gonna write a term paper and the term paper will be about like, how to get rid of ants or whatever. Right? And all these term papers, all these people are writing these blog posts about how to get rid of ants. Okay, now what's going to happen is over time, these guys are going to have other links. And they'll be like, wow, okay, so uh, let's see. Let's bring this to front. So this guy has Ted Jones in his, and then maybe this guy has Ted Jones and maybe some other people, you know, in his. And then maybe he's got Jackass McGee too. And then this guy's got Ted Jones and Bob whatever. Bob, right? And you're going to see all these. Now, what Google's doing is they're looking for it and they're like, hey, wait a minute. All these people talking about ants and getting rid of ants are talking about this Ted Jones guy. So I think Ted Jones is important for ants. And so what happens is Ted Jones will inadvertently rank for the word ants. Same thing happens if you were to go to Google and you were to type in, um, I think it is, let's see, what is it? PDF download or something or something like that. Let's see. PDF download. I 
think it is. I think that's the term. Uh, what you're going to see is that uh, PDF download, right? On this page, as far as like SEO goes, totally sucks. But what happens is all the sites that say, hey, check out my PDF, they also say download the PDF reader and they link to the site, which means that this site ranks even though the SEO part of it's not that great. Okay, so links speak really, really well. Now, your SEO is going to speak very well as well if you go for the right keywords. So, how are we doing so far? Everyone getting this? You guys enjoying this? You learn a lot? Okay, if you are, let me know. Drink some coffee that now is cold. All right, everyone following along? All right, now. How many of you guys want to learn more of this stuff in great detail and have me walk you through it and actually give you keywords that you could use, right? So like I go through, I do the competitive analysis. I use the tools that I spend thousands of dollars a month for. I get you your keywords. I show you what to use. You go through it and we walk you through everything and I teach you how to rank for everything. How many of you guys are like, yeah, I want to learn that, right? So what we're going to do is this. I'm going to have a how to get free traffic from the search engines course, okay? What we're going to do is it's going to be a special SEO free traffic live training with me personally. Now, we're going to do a bunch of webinars on a bunch of different topics for SEO so you could start getting traffic. Okay, This is going to be real world stuff. So I'm going to go through. I'm going to show you how to choose the right keywords. That's going to be a full on thing. We're going to go through your sites. We're going to break them down. We're even going to have a bonus call where we go as long as it takes to give you guys all a competitive analysis. We'll give you guys the download of the reports that I provide and we'll give you guys the roadmap to getting traffic, okay? We're gonna show you how to choose the right keywords, how to rank on Google for long-term traffic and profits, how to set up your blog for SEO, how to do the design and plugins so you can start ranking. And again, remember, I've gotten over 100 million free visitors from the search engines. We're gonna show you YouTube secrets that got me millions of views, free traffic with social media part one about Facebook and Instagram, free traffic with social media part two about Pinterest and image ads, how to drive traffic with forums. This is killer. Like if you use this one method, you'll get traffic. Like you will, I guarantee you'll get traffic if you do it right. Very, very cool. All right, we're gonna show you how to repurpose, we're gonna show you how to repurpose your content for massive traffic. This one's killer. Plus we're gonna give you three of my killer WordPress plugins that help you with this as well. Now. Um, as a special bonus, I'm going to be personally helping you find three killer rankable words in your niche. Now, the total value of all these webinars, all these trainings is $1163, and it would be worth it at that price, but I'm going to give you another bonus, and we're going to give you a special price. So, the best the extra bonus is that you are going to get a bonus detailed traffic analysis for any niche market. So, you come to me, and you're like, dude, Marcus, I am in the keto diet market. Get me some keywords. I'm going to give you a competition analysis. So we're going to go through and I'm going to get you Excel files from competitive rankings. I'm going to get you keyword files of non-competitive, easy to rank for words. I'm going to give you a keyword overall uh, overview and a deep dive into your traffic. We're going to show you like if you want to rank in this, if you want to get traffic in this market, this is what you do. And you're going to go do it. And you'll come back and you'll be like, thank you, Marcus. That was great. It's working, right? We're going to give you that. Now, next, I'm not just going to give you the keywords, the traffic analysis, the competition analysis, all that stuff. I'm going to give you a traffic strategy plan. I'm going to say, look, this is how you detail your content. This is how you make it work. This is where you want to go to get the traffic. These are the keywords you need to focus on. This is the content you need to make. Here's what you should expect and more. So we're going to give you all that stuff in addition to all the trainings that's going to teach you how to get traffic. And all you got to do is go to freetrafficskills.com. I actually haven't even checked this, so it's probably the old price, which is a killer deal. And we're going to have these trainings, give them to you, um, and walk you through everything step by step. So you go through there, you go to freetrafficskills.com, you scroll down, and you can see it's only 197 bucks to get all that awesome stuff. And I guarantee you will go through and you will be blown away at the traffic, the traffic opportunities that are out there. So we're going to help you make it work for you. Uh, Vinny, our support is usually 9 to 5 Eastern Standard Time. So wait till tomorrow and you'll get a response on your ticket. All right, so just go here to freetrafficskills.com, freetrafficskills.com. Fill out the form, 
say, Marcus, I want some traffic. Um, once we get started, we'll have the webinar. You're going to bring up your niches. I'll go through each of your niches individually. We'll give you guys the downloads of the reports I generate, and we will make it work for you in a really cool way. That is at freetrafficskills.com. If you enjoyed this webinar and you're new, make sure you subscribe and click the bell. And if you don't know what niche market you want to go into and you're just starting out and you're like, dude, Marcus, I want to get started, I would very, very highly recommend you get a high-ticket niche. Um, the high-ticket niches are on special right now, too. If you go to the page, go to highticketniches.com. Um, you can get hooked up with that and get rocking and rolling. And I will also do a traffic analysis for you on that one. All right, so freetrafficskills.com. Um, I would suggest that everyone who's interested in getting free traffic should definitely join this course. Um, if for anything, just for me to give you a rundown on how it all works. So no matter what other course you're in with me, um, this is one that I think would definitely, definitely benefit you. Uh, so freetrafficskills.com, and we'll take some questions as we go through. All right, so any questions on what we went over today? Okay. Awesome stuff. And when you guys get that report, um, you're going to go through and make it work. Okay, what would you take as a first post on a website? I'm not sure what that means. Um, I can turn on live chat for a little bit here, but I do have to go back inside in a little bit. Um, but if you want to get me on live chat now, I'll, I'll keep that open for you. Should you take a topic that is extremely random like a keyword? No, you should go for people that are looking for what it is you have to offer. So whatever your affiliate offer is, I would focus on that. Would I go for a really long tail one? I'd go for a non-competitive one. I don't care how long tail they are as long as they're not competitive. Okay. So that's freetrafficskills.com. Get in there, and uh, we can get you signed up. Okay, where can I find your video on how to create a landing page? I'm new to this. Uh, if you're looking for the landing page video, go into your Simple Site software. If you don't have the Simple Site software, you can get at simplesitesbonus.com. All right, so you're going here, and go into your Simple Sites, and then you're going to go into the Setup Shop. This stuff will teach you how to make your landing page. Uh, live chat is on now, so now it is on. So you might want to just click it or refresh it or whatnot. Okay. All right, guys, any questions? Take it from there. Jackie, hi Marcus. If I got a high ticket niche, can I get a traffic report? Uh, get us on a Tuesday call and I'll do one for your high ticket niche. What would you start in, when would you start installing AdSense? Uh, it depends on my site. Um, if it's a good one for AdSense, maybe right away. Um, but it just depends. AdSense is not like a big, huge money maker for me. I've made a couple hundred thousand with it, but uh, it's not like the be all end all. All right, guys, any other questions? Also, if you do have a niche and you're struggling getting traffic, definitely do freetrafficskills.com uh, so you can get that report about how to go in and get the traffic. All right, any other questions? And we'll take it from there. Uh, Jules, try to keep your comments in one line so it's a little bit easier. Um, any trips, tricks on the first few sentences of a post? Have your keyword in them. Um, let's see. Uh, Mary, yeah, I'll, I'll check your tickets for you. And we'll see if uh, we got you in there. 
Okay, any other questions? How would I monetize my Instagram account? What's your Instagram account about, Melton? How long does it take to build out a site? It just depends. Yeah, Jules, you should definitely get the Simple Sites course at simplesitesbonus.com. Uh, it's about quotes, question mark? Is it, is it about quotes or not? I mean, you got to tell me. It's your Instagram. Uh, Mary, yeah, I just put in uh, info to contact you about that. Okay. Will I get the same content from free traffic skills in the Simple Sites course? Uh, no, it's a little bit different. So like the bonuses and stuff you're not going to get. You will get some of the SEO training, uh, but not the bulk of it. Like the Here's the deal. Order the free traffic course for this. Okay, you're going to get the detailed traffic analysis. That's like, that's why you should order this course. All the other stuff is is icing on the cake. But that alone is is the key. All right, guys, any other questions, let us know. All right, cool deal. Have you got any YouTuber besides yourself, of course, which we really like watching? Um, I just like watching me. I give good info. Um, so yeah. Okay, cool. So we're going to go ahead and close off. Doesn't look like there's too many other questions unless you have a last minute one. Uh, I will be on live chat for a little bit. Um, the price of the freetrafficskills.com will be going up in the next 10 minutes. Um, so if you want to save money, get that detailed analysis and get all the trainings, uh, how to choose the right keywords, ranking on Google for long term, how to set up your blog for SEO, YouTube SEO secrets, uh, free traffic, social media part one and part two, driving traffic with forums. That one's killer. Uh, repurpose your content for massive traffic, plus get three killer WordPress plugins and also get the detailed traffic analysis of com competition, keyword overview, deep dive, uh, traffic strategy and more. That is worth its weight in gold. That's worth getting this course just for that. Um, I would definitely start there, freetrafficskills.com. Um, again, the price will be going up right now. It is a measly $197, uh, which is dirt. Uh, you can get in there, uh, be part of that class, get your custom report, uh, get all the info and everything like that. You can even do the easy pay plan, which I think it's like 12 bucks more or something like that, or 20 bucks. I don't know, I didn't do the math. Um, but you can get in there and make that work and uh, we'll get you the recordings, get you the notes, and get you your uh, traffic plan for your specific niche, no matter what niche you're in. Um, if you go in there and you use it, you will be able to find hidden niches guaranteed, right? You'll be able to find keywords that you never would have thought possible, uh, which is really cool. Are there any webinars similar to Quora which you can use to get your links out to when starting a new site? Yes, Jules, in this one, um, we will be going over that, okay? All right, cool. All right, awesome deal. So get in there. Let's make it happen. If you have not yet gotten a high ticket niche, do so now and uh, let's make money. Also, uh, announcement, uh, we are going to have our Black Friday sale um, on the other courses that we offer. So if you guys want to learn more about that, stay tuned for it. Um, it, the way that I run my Black Friday sale is kind of fun where you guys actually pick a product and you make an offer. And if I like the offer, we'll accept it. If I don't, I'll counter it. And it makes it kind of like a wheel and deal kind of thing, which is pretty cool. So stay tuned for that. Uh, the free traffic skills.com will not be available after, um, during the, the Black Friday sale because it's a course that we're closing before that. Um, so get in that now and then you can get the others uh, on the Black Friday special. So, hope you guys enjoyed this call. Go forth and get traffic. Go to freetrafficskills.com. Get signed up. If you don't yet have a high-ticket niche, do that now. 
and let's make some money online together. Thanks for joining. Subscribe. See you in the next video.